Susan, welcome Thank to Media much. Revolutionaries. How did you get into this industry? Mm, good question. Um, I, uh, I always wanted to be in media. Uh, I, I mean, this was pre-digital. I started working in the 70s. And if you wanted to be part of the conversation, the social conversation, political conversation, cultural conversation, you went into media. I couldn't imagine anyone wanting to do anything else. So I worked at the Berkeley Tribe when I was in college, and I freelanced for a couple of magazines, fact-checking for them. But my first real job was as the assistant to the editor-in-chief of a magazine that Francis Coppola started out in San Francisco called City. It was a great job. <clears throat> I got to see every part of the magazine's workings because my boss let me sit in on all of his meetings. And it was an understaffed magazine, which meant that I got to do a lot of things. I put my hand up for everything. I worked at several magazines. Ultimately, I launched a magazine called Premier for Rupert Murdoch, and I edited that for eight and a half years. And it was a magazine about the movies. We had a lot of good times doing it. Uh, but I was recruited from that job, ultimately, by Disney, initially for the studio. But once I got there, I realized the television was much more fun. Did you ever have a mentor over that period of time, or more than one? Or? I, I, I did. I had multiple mentors. I had um, my female mentor during that period of time was a woman named Paula Weinstein, who was a great producer, um, now works um, uh, at least part-time here in New York at the Tribeca Festival. Um, but she was amazing, and she took me under her wing, and she gave me lots of scripts to read, and she explained how stories became movies, and, um, and was never condescending, but gave me a lot of really good advice. Um, and John Evans was a huge mentor to me. He was the president of Murdoch Magazines, and was really my sponsor when I launched Premiere, and was a, a, you know, just a a huge mentor, not always the kindest mentor. <laughs> uh, he, he, you know, would just push me tough to love. things that uh, were not in my comfort zone. Mm. And I had a tough time transitioning from being a really good number two to being the boss. And he really pushed that. What was, has been your greatest setback ever in the industry and, and how did you deal with it? Mm -hmm. So my biggest setback um, was very public. I was fired from a job running ABC Entertainment, which means running prime time, just a few weeks before we were announcing a schedule that included Desperate Housewives and Lost and Grey's Anatomy. Great so shows. yes, and I was excited about them, and you know, really felt like we were on track, um, and I lost my job. And uh, I was furious, I was heartbroken, I was embarrassed <laughs> because it was very public. Um, but I think I learned a few things from that experience. One was resilience. You know, you, I could have sat there and wallowed in that for many, many, many months. And my husband actually called me that night. I was out in Los Angeles, he was in New York, and he said, you have 24 hours to weep over this, and then you're gonna get over it. And you're gonna think about all the things you can do now that you couldn't have considered 24 hours ago. And it was great advice. It, it did change my thinking about what had happened. You love this industry, you've loved it I from do. the beginning. Mm -hmm. What would be the major reason that you would give to a young person just graduating college that they ought to get into our industry? Yeah, that, well, I, exactly the same reason I went into it. If you want to be part of the conversation, if you want to shape how people think about the world, um, if you want to really touch people and be touched by people, go into media. It's a fabulous world. So what's your prediction for the next 10 years in this industry? What, what changes are gonna happen? What's gonna drive it? Change is, uh, it is increasing all the time. The rate of change has been staggering over the last decade. It's gonna continue to be the case. And 
when you see technological shifts or, or new technologies emerging, that gives a whole new group of people the ability to build businesses on top of that. So we'll see what comes, but I'm sure it's going to be really interesting. I think the other piece of it, though, is that um, I'm seeing people beginning to, uh, to pick up formats that were considered dead and reimagine them. So for example, the magazine, where I started. Uh, five years ago, everyone was talking about magazines being dead. Who was going to subscribe to XYZ? And what I'm seeing a lot of in both New York, San Francisco, Los Angeles, are these gorgeous new magazines that have a very specific point of view, um, are very thoughtfully conceived, wonderful contributions in them, and they're charging $20 an issue for them, and they're selling out. So they are made for a very specific narrow cast audience who loves them, and I think you're going to see more of that too, people reimagining old forms and making them new again.